Okay, so we are working on lesson 9.3, and it's about multiplying multiples of 10 by one-digit numbers. I am going to show you how to complete these problems by showing, walking you through number one. Then you will do two, three, and four on your own. I will show you how to complete number five, and then you'll do six and seven on your own. Um, we'll walk through number nine together and through number 10 together. You are not completing number eight. Okay. So let's start with number one. This says find the product. So we are actually going to be multiplying two digit multiple of 10 by one digit number. These are the steps. First, I multiply my ones column together and then I multiply my tens column, okay? So what is nine times zero? Nine times zero is zero. Anything times zero is zero. What is nine times five? 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45. 9 times 5 is 45. Okay? And that is how you answer this. Multiply your 1's column and then multiply by your 10's column. All right. Complete number 2, 3, and 4, and then come back and push play. Number 5. My directions say use mental math or properties to group the factors another way. Then find the product. Okay, so my factors are 3 times 3 times 20, or 3 times 20 times 3. I can regroup this another way to make it simpler. So I could say, okay, let's multiply 3 times 3 and then do times 20. So it is 3 times 3 times 20. That equals 9 times 20 because 3 times 3 is 9 times 20. So what is 9 times 20? Well now that I know how to do my uh, equation I can say 9 times 0 because I multiply the 1's place first is 0 and then I'm going to multiply the 10's. 9 times 2 is 18 so my answer is 180. Go ahead and complete six and seven. And then when you're finished, push play. Number nine. This is a word problem using the same uh, type of equations we've been doing. So here we go. Jerry brings eight packages of paper plates to a picnic. Each package contains 20 plates. If 23 plates were left over, how many plates were used? I'm noticing something. I have three different numbers in this problem, which means I'm more than likely going to have at least two operations to do. So let's read it one more time and see what we need to do. It says, Jerry brings eight packages of paper plates to a picnic. Each package contains 20 plates. If 23 plates were left over, how many plates were used at the picnic? So we are finding how many were used at the picnic. So the first thing I need to do is figure out how many paper plates I have total, and then I can subtract how many were left over to find out how many were used. So the first thing I need to do is 20 times eight to find how many plates we had. 8 times 0 is 0. 8 times 2 is 16. So I have 160 plates total. 23 plates were left over. Do that math and get your answer. I look forward to seeing what you come up with. Push pause, finish this, and then come back. To number 10. Okay, number 10 is asking two different things of you. First is to solve the problem, then to give an explanation. Just like we explain things in our race strategy for reading, you can explain them the same way here. You can use your sentence starters of, for example, or this shows, or I know, however you set it up. Okay, so let's read this. It says, at the school play, there are two groups of seats. Each group of seats has five rows that hold 30 people. 
How many people can be seated at the play? First, I need to find out how many people are seated at the play. Then, step two, explain how you grouped your factors to solve the problem. So first I solve it, then I explain how I did it. You have two things, solve, explain. And again, I'm seeing three numbers, so I might have more than one operation to do. Let's read it. At the school play, there are two groups of seats. Each group of seats has five rows that hold 30 people. How many people can be seated? So I have two groups with five rows with 30 people. Two groups, five rows, 30 people. How many people can be seated at the play? Go ahead and figure out your answer. When you're finished, don't forget, don't forget you need to solve it first and then explain how you grouped your factors. Don't forget the explanation.